How To Linux this week is here in beautiful Redmond, Washington, home of some large corporations, some you love, some you probably hate. But we're actually here to see what small companies are doing with Linux. My name is Chase Nunes, and I'm switching to Linux. This episode of How To Linux is brought to you by Linux Academy. Go over to linuxacademy.com slash howto to get a 33% discount. It's a summer of learning over at linuxacademy.com. You can go there to take your Linux skills up to the next level. Visit them to get a step-by-step -step video course, downloadable comprehensive study guides, and self-paced learning. You can quiz yourself, real-world scenarios, everything you need to do to learn Linux. And what's great is they have 7 plus Linux distributions where they will customize the documentation and the courses to match the version of Linux you are using. linuxacademy.com slash howto. Take your skills up to the next level. There's never been a better time. You know, I've now finally selected a distro for Linux, and now I'm learning a lot more about the platform. But really, companies out there are using new hardware to set up really cool things. A lot of you guys are wondering, instead of using old hardware, what happens when you use new hardware? I'm here at Pogo Linux to talk with Chris about what they're doing. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, by the way, you guys, this is Chris Stevenson. He's here at Pogo Linux. And before we get into the history of the company, why don't you tell me and tell the audience, what do you do here? Well, I am uh, one of Pogo Linux's Linux systems engineers. Okay. So my primary focus is going to be developing new products um, that use Linux and open source operating systems, um, as well as working on special customer projects that take a little bit of extra, extra love to figure out. Um, Give them that extra care, basically. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm started, you know, I'm a noob, I haven't known much about Linux, but you guys have been in the industry for a while. Why don't you tell us about Pogo Linux? Um, well, we've been around about 15 years now, um, and uh, we constantly are working on new products that revolve around uh, open source and Linux distributions um, for the, the more corporate world. Right. So, uh, large corporations, small businesses, uh, medical research, government, university, all that kind of stuff. Now, I picked a distro back in a previous episode, and so I'm on underway. But the thing about Linux that I first thought about is, well, it's about putting it on old hardware. It's about reviving something old and getting more legs out of it. But what you guys are doing here is taking high-end, top-of-the-line hardware and implementing that. Well, how is that working? No, that's exactly what we do. We use the newest products from the, the big players in the industry right. um, to build real 365 days a year type performance hardware for all those big industries. So we're using the latest and the greatest, as well as all the newest d distributions of Linux to provide an a enterprise-grade product. Now, I know everybody wants to hear us talk about this, but you actually got something to show us, right? I do. I got some new stuff that's pretty cool. Why don't we go take a look? All right. Let's do it. Well, Chris, take a look at this. This is, looks like a beast. Yeah, this is uh, the new product I was telling you about. So, so what is it called? This is currently codenamed the T10. T10. Yeah. So, not your average day calculator. No, this is this is full blown stuff. No, here. it's a it's a lot more powerful than that. Yeah. So, um, what, so what do we got here? This is uh, a new workstation product that we're currently developing. Okay. Um, utilizes uh, high end server grade components. All right. Uh, but ver that equipment that's virtually silent. Wow. Um, so this uh, your scientist at your local university can put this under his desk right. and not have it sound like a jet engine while he's working on now, genome sequencing. Now, they'll have to believe us here. We're in a very noisy warehouse. But yes, this thing is silent. I, 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 I can't hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it at all. It's really silent. It's very high end using great components. Here. Talk about some of the components you guys are using. Um, we here. use mostly all commodity components. Okay. You're not going to find anything that you can't find You know, if, if you right. have a part that goes bad. Yeah. Um, the cool thing about this, though, it's using two closed loop water coolers to cool those Xeons to keep right. the noise down. Right. So they're completely maintenance free. You don't have to do any work on them. Right. And it provides for almost a nearly silent operation. Wow. Um, we run uh, LSI based RAID controllers. Okay. So you can have data protection across right. all your data. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA graphics, right. so you can do all of your uh, high-end visualization, nice. and maybe game on your lunch break if you feel sure, like it. Sure, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that we're really, really excited about is uh, using SanDisk's new line of SSDs, Enterprise wow. SSDs. Those are really fast. They're really fast. So yeah. we use those SSDs in a RAID array here on, uh, that are hot swap on the front of the unit, right. and that allows us to get really, really high performance numbers for doing uh, all kinds of workloads. So now, everybody knows I just picked a distro. Mm -hmm. You guys are using, I believe, Ubuntu on here, correct? This one, yeah, it has Ubuntu. But the best part about it is 
any flavor of Linux can go on this, right? Oh yeah, we've tested this one across most of the major distributions. So Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, Ubuntu, SUSE, Scientific Linux. Right. I mean, wow. there's a lot more Those variations. Those are more than I even know, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's incredible. So what's the potential ETA? I know there's a lot of guys watching there saying, oh, I want it now, but it's still in development, right? So what's what's the potential? We're, we're right there. It should be on the website uh, anytime. So, so we see an awesome powerhouse of a workstation. I would love to have one of these in my home, but th this is just not about consumer and medical. This is, you also do big business stuff here, right? Oh yeah. And you got something really cool to show yeah, us, you can right? hear it running in the I background. I think I hear it. Let's go, let's go take a look. All right, let's take a look. All right. All right, Chris, so we just checked out the awesome workstation that you have here at Pogo, but now let's get into the server stuff, right? What, what do we got here? Uh, this is another new product we're working on okay. uh, for one of our customers. Uh, it is a highly dense server configuration. Now, I'm no expert on servers, barely an expert on Linux, but it looks like you have multiple machines in one machine, right? Is that exactly, what exactly. What, what this is, is this is, uh, uh, a product that's used to uh, be very dense in your data center. Okay. So this allows you to pack a lot of computing power into a very small amount of space. All right. And use less power than if you had, say, 12 individual servers. Right. So so these are individual server units. They are. I can actually show yeah, you let's, here. Let's so take a look, look at one here. Uh, these are the nodes. Wow. That run inside the machines. Okay. And so what these are powered by is these are powered by a single Xeon E3 processor. Okay. Um, they have their own, each machine is independent, each has its own memory, processor, hard drive, network adapters, all that. So kind of like a workstation where you would have everything in one box. This is essentially the one box. This exactly. is everything in this, one box. Everything you've got right here is, is one unit. Wow. And uh, these are uh, becoming more and more prevalent in the industry um, because of how dense they are. Yeah. And it gives you the ability to run a lot of individual systems. Right in a very small footprint. So you could potentially say have like a web server here, for example, right? Like do 12 web servers. Do 12 web servers, essentially. So uh, what kind of uh, software distro do you usually throw on these? Um, these generally run an enterprise distribution of Linux. So okay. um, for your Ubuntu flavor that you just switched over to, right. uh, it would be Debian, which okay. is what Ubuntu is based off of, um, right. which is going to be more server grade. Right. Um, it could run Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It could run CentOS, which is the uh, more freely distributed version of Red Hat. Right. Um, but yeah, pretty much sky's the limit on this as well. Well, that's that's amazing, man. And it's not even that heavy either. But no, granted, they're they're really light. Yeah. But when you put twelve together, I guess they get really really heavy. Yeah. That's amazing. Our customers are really excited about these because when they're running a lot of different uses, you know, and they would normally need an entire rack of servers. Yeah. Um, this basically equates to three servers worth of space, and now you have 12. But I assume, obviously, when a customer maybe might want to buy one of these, they don't buy all 12 at once. It provides expansion for them too, right? Generally, but to be honest, actually, most customers do buy really? it completely populated, yeah. Wow. And then they expand from there. They, they utilize like bigger it as hard they... drives and more memory and things like that? Yeah, or, or I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll have all the nodes populated, okay. but they may not use them all right I away. See. So a lot of people will use them for cloud computing too, where it's, everything is distributed across all the nodes. Right. And in the event of a failure, one node can go offline, but your operation still continues on. So you mentioned uh, not quite available yet. This is also coming soon, right? Yeah, this is currently being uh, developed for a, a special customer project, um, okay. but it will be another product that'll be on the, uh, available on the website soon. So we got server hardware, we got production hardware as far as workstations, all this great hardware. Where can people find out more information about what's coming up? Yeah, again, our, our website's going to be the best spot. So okay. pogolinux.com. Awesome. Um, our storage products you can find at pogostorage.com. But both sites link together. So. Well, Chris, I got to say thanks so much for, for joining us on this edition of How To Linux. And I got to say, I want to go back to that workstation, do some gaming. Can we go do that? Yeah, let's go do let's it. Let's go do it, man. It's all right. I want to say a big thank you to Mr. Chris Stevenson over there at Pogo Linux. Man, they have some really cool high-end desktop and server-based systems, man. I wish I could have one for my garage to run my home-based server, let me tell you. I want to say a big thanks to you guys. That's right, you guys who are supporting us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Linux if you want more information on how you can support the show. And by the way, we love Twitter, so make sure you follow us on Twitter at HowToLinux. 
Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys again soon.